students. So this is going to be an updated uh, poker hand assignment video. Um, we went over the beginnings of it in class on Thursday where I provided some starting code for three files that we're going to use for the assignment. There is an interface file which has a .h at the ending. Um, that's where we're, we declare our functions. We have a pokerhand.cpp file. This is where we will define the functions. And lastly, we have a pokerhand underscore test.cpp. And this is where we will run our main function, which will run the logic of the game and call all the functions that are defined in pokerhand.cpp. So one correction, I had told everyone to name these poker.h, poker.cpp, pokertest.cpp. We're going to want to resave all of those files as poker hand files as opposed to poker. So you can just do file save as and then call them poker hand, just like they're specified here in the requested files on your assignment. So um, if you're just joining us and weren't here in class on Thursday, um, I provided some starting code um, for the assignment on the website CodeShare. This is the link. Um, so type this in, these two letters are capitalized, and you can see that I just have some commented code for each three of the files we're going to be using. So for example, this is going to be called pokerhand.h. This is going to be pokerhand.cpp. And each one of these files is separated by a number of um, comments. So this is the first, this is the interface file, this is the pokerhand.cpp file, and then on 85, that's where poker test starts. So um, you can go to this link and copy and paste the starting code into three separate files, either using your caret text editor or on the Bitbucket website. So now I will assume that in this part of the video, everyone has three files saved in a text editor of some fashion like this. I have my interface file here. I have my poker.cpp file where I will define all the functions. And then I have the main function in poker um, hand.test. So for example, mine are incorrectly named. So I would fix that by going to save as and I'm going to name this poker hand.h. Great. And I can do the same thing for all of these. Poker hand.cpp, where we are defining the functions. And then we'll save this as poker hand underscore test.cv. All right, great. So we have the right names. And let's get started with writing the main function for the program. Um, so if we look at the assignment description, our goal is to first have the user enter five cards that are between two and nine. So the user will be prompted to enter a card one, and then they will type in one value between two and nine, and they'll do that five times for a total of five cards. And we are going to want to store these values in an, an integer array, which will keep track of their hand at a time. So let's first get started with that. So we can see that in the starting code, I have already provided um, a constant int called num cards. This is the size of our hand. We can only have five cards at a time. And I declared an int array for cards of size num cards. So an integer array that can store five integers. Uh, we provided a cout message that says enter five numeric cards using values two through nine, and then do not include face card values. So that this is where we are at right now. So um, the next thing we'll want to do is we're going to want to 
store the values. Sorry, first thing we're gonna wanna do is we want to have the person enter the value. So we want to have an output message that says card one, and then in the next iteration of our for loop, we want it to say card two. So when we first write the output message, we're gonna say card, and then we want it to say one when i is zero, and then presumably when they enter this the second card, when the for loop is at updates and now it equals i of one, we'll want it to equal card two. So you can see, I go over this in the assignment handout um, in section part one dealing the cards, and you can see that in order to maintain this pattern for card one when they enter the i the i equals zero card card two when i equals one we want the pattern to be the card number equals i plus one so when i is zero it says card one when i is one we output card two etc so let's output Sorry, I have these going the wrong way. I plus one, and then we can end the line. So it will say card one when I is zero, when I is one, I'll say card two when I is equal to four, it will say card five. And then, so at this point in the program, the user will just see a card one, and then they will know to enter a numeric value on the keyboard. And whenever the user enters a value on the keyboard, we will need to store it using the see in object. And where do we want to put it? We want to put it in the integer array for our cards. Um, so we're gonna put it in cards, and at what index do we wanna store it? We wanna store it in the order specified by our for loop, so using our index variable i. Great. So at this point, we will have stored all um, five cards in an in integer array named cards. And the next thing we'll do is our code is going to test the outcome of each hand, basically what kind of hand um, we were given, whether it's a, only a high card, a pair, a two pair, three of a kind, full house, um, straight, or four of a kind. So we are basically passing in our card integer array into each function and if they return true, since these are Boolean, um, that's their data type, they return either true or false, these functions. Um, if they return true, for example, we will output a message to the console saying, you have a four of a kind or a full house. Um, and if you don't have any of these kinds of, these kinds of functions, then we will deliver what the highest card of the integer array is by calling the high card variable, which for the high card returns an int, which is the high card. So that's basically all we're doing in the first part of the video. We're just setting up the main function so that it properly calls the functions as they are defined in the pokerhand.cpp file. The next part of the video will be going over each one of these functions. So it might take a while, um, but yeah, that's part two. Anyway, stay tuned.